A common set of questions you'll get on the CFA Level 1 for quantitative methods is to calculate the expected portfolio return, portfolio standard deviation from the variance, and the covariance. Let's take a look at a few examples. First, we have this table that has a portfolio of two assets. To find the expected return of the portfolio, use a very simple formula, which is just the sum of the weight times the return of each of the assets. And plugging that in from the table, we have 0.2 of the weight of the first asset times a 5% return plus 0.8 of the weight of the second asset times 8% of the return. And that gives us 0.074, which is 7.4%. Next, let's find the standard deviation of the portfolio. The standard deviation of the portfolio is simply going to be the square root of the variance of the portfolio. So we have to figure out what the variance of the portfolio is. To figure out the portfolio variance, we have a formula that is very similar for whether it's a two asset portfolio, three asset portfolio, or a four asset portfolio, and so on. And it starts like this. Weight of one squared, standard deviation of one squared, plus weight of two squared, standard deviation two squared, plus two times weight one, weight two times covariance of asset one and two. You'll see this over and over again, and what you'll see for the three asset portfolio is very similar, and you'll start to see a pattern. But at this point, I would encourage you to write the formula down over and over again so you can remember and memorize what the pattern looks like. The table gives us all the information we need except the covariance. The covariance of asset 1 and 2 is actually the correlation of asset 1 and 2 times the standard deviation of each of the assets. Since we have the correlation, we're going to plug in 0.45 times the standard deviation of each of asset 1 and 2, which is 0 0.07 and 0 0.20. Multiply that all together, and that gives us 0 0.0063. Now we have everything we need, so let's plug it into the formula. 0.2 of the weight 1 squared times the standard deviation of asset 1, which is 0 0.07 squared, plus weight of the asset 2, which is 0.8 squared, times the standard deviation of the second asset, which is 0.2 squared, plus 2 times weight 1, which is 0.2, times weight 2, which is 0.8, times the covariance, which we now know is 0 0.0063. Calculate that all together and we get a variance of 0 0.00022. And as we established before, the standard deviation of the portfolio is going to be the square root of that. And that gives us 0 0.015, which is 1.5%. The next example, we have a table with a three asset portfolio. The expected return of the portfolio is going to be the same method as before, which is the weight of each asset times the return of each asset and sum that together. So the weight one is going to be 33% times the return, which is 4%, plus the second asset's weight is going to be 33% times the return, which is 12%, plus the third asset's weight is going to be 34% times the return, which is 0 0.06. And when you add that up together, we get 0 0.0732, which is 7.32%. Next, to find the standard deviation of the portfolio, again, it is just the square root of the variance of the portfolio. So we want to find out what the portfolio variance is. The formula is going to have a really similar pattern to the variance of the portfolio of two assets. W1 squared times sigma1 squared plus W2 squared times sigma2 squared plus W3 squared times sigma3 squared plus 2 times W1 W2 covariance of 1 and 2 plus 2 times W1 W3 covariance of 1 and 3 plus 2 times W2 W3 covariance of 2 and 3. Whether you have a two asset portfolio or a three asset portfolio, the first terms are going to be the same, which is the weight of each asset squared times the standard deviation of each asset squared. And since we have three assets, we have three of those terms. And then the second set of terms is going to be a combination of the assets. So since for a two asset portfolio, you only have one combination, you're just going to have 2 times W1, W2, covariance 1 and 2. But for a 3-asset portfolio, 
you can have three combinations. So you have two W1, W2 times the covariance of one and two, plus two times W1, W3 times covariance of one and three, plus two times W2 times W3 times the covariance of two and three. And the table gives us all the information except again the covariance, but similar to the last example, the covariance of each combination of assets can be figured out using the correlation and we're given the correlation of the different combination of the three assets. So covariance one and two is going to be correlation of assets one and two times the standard deviation of asset one times the standard deviation of asset two, which is 0 0.095 that's given in the table times the standard deviation of asset one, which is the square root of the variance that's given in the table. So square root of 0 0.02 times the square root of the variance of asset 2, which is square root of 0 0.08. And that gives us 0 0.0038 for covariance 1 and 2. And let's repeat the process for covariance of 1 and 3 and covariance of 2 and 3. And now we can plug in everything into the portfolio variance formula with the weight 1 squared being the 33% squared times the standard deviation of asset one squared, which is actually just the variance of asset one. And the table gives us the variance as opposed to the standard deviation. So watch out for that. So that's just going to be 0 0.02 plugged in there, plus the 33% weight of the second asset times 0 0.08, which is the variance of asset two, plus 34% squared, which is weight of asset three times 0 0.008, which is the variance of asset 3, plus 2 times the weight 1, weight 2, which is 33%, 33%, times 0 0.0038, which is covariance of 1 and 2, plus 2 times weight 1 and weight 3, which is 33% and 34%, and the covariance of which is 0 0.001265, plus 2 times the weight 2 and weight 3, which is 33% times 34% times the covariance of asset 2 and 3, which is the negative 0 0.02201. And altogether, that gives us 0 0.00799 as the portfolio variance. And we're trying to find the portfolio standard deviation, which is the square root of the portfolio variance. So square root of 0 0.00799 is going to give us 0 0.08937 or 8.937%. The next example is back to a two asset portfolio. And in this example, they give us the variance for each asset instead of the standard deviation and the covariance between the assets. To calculate the expected portfolio return, we do the same formula, which is the sum of the weight of each asset in the portfolio times the return plug in the weight and the asset return to get 6.6%. Then to get the standard variation of the portfolio, start with the variance of the portfolio, W1 squared, sigma 1 squared, plus W2 squared, sigma 2 squared, plus 2 times W1, W2, covariance 1 and 2. Let's plug in all the information that we know from the table. When we're plugging in the covariance, notice in the table that the covariance is 102. That unit doesn't really make sense. And that's because in the questions, sometimes the covariance is given in percentage squared. So when we convert it to decimal so that it's in the same unit as all the other decimals we've put in the formula already, it would be 102 divided by 10,000 or four zeros because percent already has two zeros and squared is going to add another two zeros. So when we plug it into the formula in decimals, it will be 0 0.0102. I wanted to call that out. And plugging it all into the formula, we get 0 0.0225 as the portfolio variance. And the standard deviation of the portfolio is going to be the square root of the portfolio variance. So when we square root 0 0.0225, we get 14.9 or 15%. There's one more step in this question, which is it asks for the correlation. And the correlation is going to be the opposite of how we found the covariance. So co correlation between two assets is going to be the covariance of two assets divided by the standard deviation of each of those assets. We have all of that information. So plug in 0 0.0102 for covariance 
and 0 0.02 square root of that and 0 0.04 square root of that since those are variances and we want the standard deviation and that gives us 0.36 as the correlation. In our final example, we have a covariance matrix, so we'll see how to deal with that. But first, the portfolio return is going to be the weight of each asset times the return of each asset. Let's plug that in, and we get 2.4%. Next, the portfolio standard deviation is going to be the square root of the portfolio variance. So to find the portfolio variance for this three asset portfolio, which is W1 squared, sigma 1 squared, plus W2 squared, sigma 2 squared, plus W3 squared, sigma 3 squared, plus 2 times W1, W2 covariance 1 and 2, plus 2 times W1, W3 covariance 1 and 3, plus 2 times W2, W3 covariance 2 and 3. Let's plug in what we know from the table. So we start with the weight, 0.2 for asset 1 squared, and we want the variance, and the table gives us the standard deviation this time. So it's going to be 0.1 squared to get the variance, plus W2, which is the weight of the second asset, which is 50%, squared times the standard deviation squared, which is the variance of asset 2, which is 0 0.04 squared, plus the third asset weighting is 30% squared, times the variance is 0 0.015 squared, plus 2 times 0.2 times 0.5, which are the weights of 1 and 2. And next, the covariance of asset 1 and 2 is when you look at asset 1 on the left-hand side and asset 2 at the top, and you get 335. And 335 is going to be converted to a decimal by dividing it by 10,000, so that's 0 0.0335. Then for the next term, you have the weights of 1 and 3 asset, and the covariance of assets 1 and 3 is in the table going to be 120. So divide that by 10,000, move the decimal place four times to get 0 0.012. And then the final term for assets two and three, the covariance is going to be 107 divided by 10,000. And when you plug that all in, you get 0 0.01217 as the portfolio variance. So square root that to get the portfolio standard deviation which is 0.1103, or 11.03%.